I don't really follow the Kickstarter trend. The idea of throwing money I don't have at a speculative project seems a little futile when my interests don't align with what is popular. But this time, something I like is popular enough to get started, the Soldiers of Humankind Desert and Forest Editions. Woodland soldiers, you say? With cloaks, you say? Well, that's quite interesting for anyone looking into making some Gaunt's Ghost models beyond the official six, of course, which is hardly enough for an army. By the time this video goes live, there's not much time left on the Kickstarter, well, or maybe it's actually already complete. I just want to make it clear that I'm not affiliated with them, I'm not making this video for them, rather I'm looking at their sample model for the sake of my ongoing mission to document all of the options for cloaked space soldiers. So here are one of each the desert and forest models released as samples, creatively named Thirsty Man and Man with Stick. Well, the forest model is one I'm interested in, and I'll be printing that one out today. The one thing I notice is that the legs seem a little awkward. I didn't realise it at first, but the knees are lower down the legs than they should be. Which is a very odd mistake to make, and I'm not sure how that would come about. Well, we need to actually print the thing sometime, so let's take a look at that. And I immediately need to bring up my old low-resolution printer, there will be some imperfections in the print, particularly the hand holding the stick. Strangely, the supports came out really well and separated with almost no effort. I chose to print the pre-supported version, even though I really dislike pre-supported versions. Supports should be made to match your printer, as every print has different characteristics, so a pre-support will never match your printer. Most of the time, my printer seems to choke on them. But this model had some of the best supports for my printer of any pre-supported model I've printed, which is nice. So let's stop meandering and get to painting the thing. And I've come up with a little trick to help out with my poor quality prints caused by my aged printer. Gloss varnish underneath the primer. An odd mix to be sure, but the gloss varnish has some volume and clings to the grid lines and the smaller imperfections, filling them up some way and smoothing it out, and then the primer on top acts like a primer should and I can get to painting over the top. And it is the same painting process as all of my Gaunt's Ghost models so far, and while this isn't a Gaunt's Ghost model, it'll certainly look good next to them once it's painted in the same scheme. So as I get the base coats down, I'll mention the Kickstarter quickly if you are interested in that. For 33 or 56 pounds, you get half or all of the STLs created, which are numbered somewhat differently depending on where you look. On the front of the Kickstarter, it's 640 minis, but on the individual backer levels, it's 92 plus the separate parts to make over a thousand variations. Either way, that is a lot of models with quite some variety. And those knees seem to be a consistent issue, but with some of them, the arms are also somewhat awkward, and it's not helped by the fact that the rifle model that they made has a really short stock, way shorter than it should be, shorter even than a Nerf gun, and some of my long-time viewers will know just how passionate I am on that particular subject. But these knees and arms aren't necessarily a bad thing, it's just an artistic choice. And speaking of artistic choices, well, I'm not making any when it comes to painting, because I'm following the same painting process as all of my other ghost models have had. And adding in some of these highlights and coloration really brings this model to life. The wrap around the rifle I painted brown and then highlighted into white, which is a technique that I like to use to make a dirty cloth look. The black uniform and armour is highlighted quite harshly into white, but then it's smoothed out with a cheaty black glaze wash. But the real draw is the cloak, and I really do like the style of it. The main green colour underneath the camo pattern does get a little bit of highlighting, but I'm able to be quite fast and messy here as much of the imperfections will be hidden under the camo pattern above. The pattern itself is just a fleckle pattern of groups of spots, and I'm using mostly the same colours from the rest of the model the blacks, greys, browns, and sometimes I throw in an ochre if I'm feeling excitable. 
So now that I've spent an hour with the model, I'd like to raise some positive and negative points of the model that may shine some light on the other models in the Kickstarter, and I will start with the negative points, as that seems sensible. The knees and arms, as I mentioned before, are a little oddly proportioned. I don't think it's a big deal, it's just an artistic choice, but it doesn't resonate with me personally. The hands and face are also a little on the small side. Whilst they are closer to true scale, which I usually prefer, specifically when it comes to being 3D printed, these parts lose all of their detail, and I had to paint in the fingers onto essentially smooth hands, and the face just ends up looking a little squished. And while that's entirely possible that it is my 3D printer that's causing that, being a first generation model, I can quite easily not count that against the model itself. One point that might be a positive or a negative is the way that the bundles are organised. If you're building an entire army of these, the bundles are great, you get many, many options. However, if you're like me and like to dabble a bit here and there in different models and have a few of each thing, there's no small bundle that just has a few options. Except for the single sample model, which is what I'm showing here. As for the pros, I can say that the pre-supported versions work really well with my printer. I find many light supports give the best consistency, and that's what this model has. Another pro is that there will be multi-part options, which is great for switching things up and having different variations, but it's also good for kit bashing. Now, I haven't seen how the models are split, so I don't know if they're compatible with other kits, but it's certainly a good thing even if they're not. And particularly the overall style of the uniform and especially the cloaks, I think is actually really cool. The models do look rather good, even if the poses somewhat let them down sometimes. Overall, I'm not convinced either way. They aren't Gaunt's Ghost models, but something very similar and something you could certainly proxy as. Or, if you're just after some science fiction woodmen or some desert soldiers as well, this is an option you can look into. But sort of only if you want a lot of them. So hopefully I've shown enough for you to make you think about these yourselves, but I don't think they're for me. But there's certainly nothing wrong with them, and this model will be joining the rest of my army. But with all that said, I'm Edscar, always will be, and thank you very much for watching.